It's a scandal too far for a once mighty Australian icon which could end with it being broken up. But the head of AMP's second biggest shareholder is unapologetic for not demanding the sacking of the man at the centre of that scandal when the allegations against him hit the financial headlines. We did what I think all shareholders should do and we tried to protect our investment, not exercise a moral judgement. An investment that was being battered by the news that Bo Pahari had been promoted to be head of AMP Capital, despite being docked half a million dollars for the sexual harassment of one of his staff. He's since been demoted back to his old job, still earning millions of dollars a year. The single most important thing I do every day is talk to my people. Uh, they're fantastic. Labor Senator Deborah O'Neill, who two weeks ago revealed more sexual harassment at AMP, is in no doubt Mr Pahari should have been fired. Profit at any price is not commerce, it's exploitation. And what we've seen with the continuing engagement of Mr Pahari in that role is dollars trumping the reality of the human experience. And that's focused attention on those same shareholders who forced out company chairman David Murray and Mr Pahari's boss, John Fraser. Nearly all the people the ABC has spoken to have suggested that because he's a big revenue generator for AMP Capital, Mr Pahari was held to a different standard. Shareholders are inherently conflicted by their desire often to continue earning dividends from the, ter from the company. So they're often unwilling to go too far and air the organisation's dirty laundry. There was enough courage to seek some change, but not enough courage to do what everybody knows should be done. Warren Staples says Exhibit A for shareholder hypocrisy was banks ripping off clients, which led to the Hain Royal Commission in 2018. Which bank cheats some of its most vulnerable customers in their hour of need? There were lots of instances where the misconduct in banks had been made public and none of the shareholders had really been that unhappy because the banks were making them high levels of profit. In Commonwealth Bank's case, investors only stepped in and forced the resignation of boss Ian Narav when a money laundering scandal threatened those high levels of profit which goes to the heart of why anyone buys shares in the first place, and that's to make money. It's for that reason that ANP investor Simon Mawinney says he understands why there's a perception that somebody who generates lots of money, like Bo Pahari, is protected by shareholders. I think we are conflicted. I, I, I wouldn't like to hide behind that. Mr Mawinney says he moved against the board of AMP because it underplayed the severity of what was revealed about Mr Pahari's behaviour. As for protecting Mr Pahari, he points out that bad behaviour happened in 2017. It's incredibly unusual for boards and management teams to be expected to go back and retrospectively put their stamp on decisions made in the past. And this whole concept of double jeopardy where you don't try someone twice for the same crime is, is potentially relevant. Mr Pahari's presence at AMP links him to that event in 2017. It's not like he's pulled up stumps and said, look, I'm really sorry, I made a mistake and I'm going to move on. He stayed there. Senator O'Neill and Simon Mawinney are in agreement, though, that if Mr Pahari was to be sacked, 2017 was the time to do it.